Hey, what's up guys? Me again, Dan Richardson. I am here just addressing the questions that were posed to us uh, for week four. And I'm gonna go ahead and dive into those since we do have a time limit. So the first question was, you know, how are these sessions similar to what I imagined a counseling session being? You know, I said, yes, they very much are uh, both in thought as well as personal experience, both as the counselor and through lots of the pastoral counseling that I'm involved with here at work. Um, the second question is, you know, identify the skills from chapter eight that I noticed. So uh, the first counseling session, I noticed a lot of paraphrasing being used. Um, it seemed like the counselor was restating uh, a lot for clarity and then to allow the client to expound on uh, what the, the counselor had then just said. So it kind of gave him a little bit of time to hear back what he said, but also think through uh, and open up more. So I thought that was interesting. Also used a lot of probing and open-ended questions. Um, he was very attentive. Um, he also followed up on, uh, with the client rather, on some of the action points or action steps that he um, gave him possibly in prior counseling sessions. Um, that was toward the end, which I thought was very interesting. So he kind of, you know, it dips into a little bit of week one and some of the discipleship stuff we talked about. Um, so there's a little bit of possible discipleship going on there. Uh, client number two, um, also used a lot of open-ended questions. Um, counselor two, rather, also used a lot of open-ended questions. Um, she also used the, the use of the encourager skill, I noticed. You know, can you tell me more about this? Uh, lots of, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, a little very uh, encouraging, um, helping the client to communicate. Uh, she was very uh, empathetic of the client's feelings as well, summarized a lot for clarity. Um, and I, I made a note that it seemed like she may have been using some cognitive theory, therapy, therapy uh, stuff there as well. And then finally, number three, uh, used a lot of open-ended questions, uh, paraphrased a lot um, with follow-on questions, uh, and used a reflection of meaning skill. Um, you know, talking about how the counselee or the client identified as being a dancer, and now you know. A, counseling as a student. So he used a lot of that, it seemed like, throughout his sessions. Um, some of the differences and similarities I noted, the body language uh, seemed to be different in all three. You know, the first was very uh, attentive, listening, uh, leaning forward and engaging. The second, active listening, but um, almost a little too intense, I noticed. And then the third, uh, he seemed a little laid back, almost disinterested. I don't, I don't think that's the case, but the body language kind of communicated that. And then finally, lots of questions and summarizing for clarity. You know, all, all three of the counselors did that. Uh, so a question I'll leave uh, out there for possible discussion is, you know, for counselor number two, it seemed uh, like she did a lot of summarizing and leading the client a lot. Um, my question then is, was this too much? And does this allow the client to fully process uh, what she's trying to do or trying to say? or what she's feeling. So that's kind of my question out there for you guys. Thank you guys. See you next week.